Monday at 8.30 and CBS brings you Jeff Regan, Investigator, starring Frank Graham as Regan with Frank Nelson as Anthony J. Lyon. So stand by for mystery and suspense and adventure in tonight's transcribed story, A Fire for Romano. It started with a little man with deep wrinkles in his forehead and troubles on his mind. Then there was a kid traveling fast in a hot rod. And then there were two women. One who didn't deserve to die, but did. And another one who did deserve to die, but didn't. It was a sunny, healthy Chamber of Commerce Tuesday that I wandered into my boss, the Lion's office. Got a surprise. No Anthony J. Lyon. Then I remembered he was on vacation. Yeah. This made it look like an even sunnier, healthier Tuesday. Let's see, the beach or the track or... That was before the door opened right behind me. And the aforementioned little man with wrinkles walked in. Uh, Mr. Regan? Huh? You are Mr. Regan, the de- detective? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. am. Please, Mr. Regan, I need your help. Could you help me? Well, I'm afraid I didn't get your name. Oh, oh, I, I am Romano. Elio Romano. Well, sit down, Mr. Romano. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, what what do you say, Mr. Regan? Very nice fit. What? What's that? Oh, oh, just the chair. Uh, fits pretty good. Uh, the, the chair uh, fits? Yeah, yeah, my boss is on vacation. I'm just trying out his chair. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah. Uh, suppose you tell me about your problem. You're uh, needing help, Mr. Romano. Oh, yes, yes, Mr. Regan. It's uh, true. I do need help. My store. It's my store. Uh Uh-huh, store. I have a smaller grocery store. It's on the 6th Street. It's my own little store, and I'm very proud... Romano, what about the store? Oh, such a nice little place where people may buy food. We got everything, my Maria and I. We uh, we are the proprietors of this store. (laughs) We also own it. Fine, fine. Now, what about... It's called the Romanos. We have a big new neon sign... My someone is trying to destroy my store. Now we're making headway. Tell me about the someone. I don't know this is someone. My if I should get my hands on them... Somebody breaks I... windows? No, no, your... no, 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 no. They tried to burn it down. They tried to burn my store. When? Last week, Thursday. Ah, did you call the police? Yes. And then what? Well, they said there was an accident. They said I did this to my own store. Ma questa una cosa che... Oh, mamma mia. And you're sure it was no accident? Mr. Regan, would I destroy the one thing Marie and I have given our lives to make? Would I so much as harm a single little glass window? No, I would not. Um, where'd the fire start? In the back room where the cans are stored. What time of day? Night. It was at night. My Marie and I, we sleep above the store. My Maria smelled the smoke, and together we put out the fire before the damage could become great. Mm -hmm. That's the only time it happened? No. No, the day before that, I found a light match in the the waste basket. It was just as I was closing for the night. Well, I stopped this one very quick. Two nights in a row. You're right, Romano. Doesn't look very accidental. Oh, believe me, Mr. Regan. I would never do this to my store. Never, never. Okay, Romano. I believe you. Suppose you and I run out there. Take a look. The little man with the wrinkled brow got in the car beside me, and we drove out 6th Street, past Alvarado, past Union. We parked in front of a small grocery store with a big neon sign over the door. The sign said, very proudly, Romano's. And my client, Romano, glanced at it, nodded approvingly, and we walked in. Oh, you're back safely. That foolish woman. Of course I'm back safely. Uh, this is Mr. Regan, the detective. See, si, see, si, see. Si. Uh, Mr. Regan, my wife, Maria. <laughs> you're a very foolish woman. Elio, twice <laughs> said it's too much. How do you do, Miss Romano? Oh, the pig of a husband. If you worry about him and he says so, he call you foolish. If you do not worry about him, he say you don't care. Maria, Maria, Mr. Regan is going to help us. He promised he will help us. So, told him everything, Elio. Maria, please. Uh... Everything, Elio. You promised me you would have told Mr. Regan everything. See, si, see. Si. Well. Um, suppose you tell me, Mrs. Romano. See, si, see, si, Maria. Suppose you tell me. Elio. 
Mr. Regan, in the first place, you must know that we do not have much money. See, si, very little, Mr. Regan. In the second place, you must know we do not have many friends. See, si, see, si, very few. Now, we'll work out the money later, Ms. Romano. Tell me about the friends now. Uh, Maria, Maria, Perry. We believe certain things, Mr. Regan. We run our business our own way, and no one can tell us otherwise. We believe in being our own boss. Mm -hmm. That's why you have very few friends? See, si, that is why. Uh, Mr. Regan, please, uh, come with me. Right away, I'll show you where the fires start. Please, come with me. Romano led me into a small back room behind the counter. There were shelves filled with canned goods and paper cartons. He showed me the waste paper basket near the door. Easy to toss a match in through the window above it that opened onto the alley. There were a few charred pieces of wood here and there, but very little damage had been done. Still, if everything Romano said were true, it didn't look like an accident. It was while he was pointing out the burnt wood that a customer came in the front door. I moved over toward the doorway and listened. Well, we'll see about that when I tell my neighbors. It was then that things began to get interesting. I looked out. Plump, smug-looking woman, carrying a heavy purse, her eyes glaring behind rimless glasses. Oh, that's your idea, eh? To force as many people in here as you can? Well, there certainly must be some law against people like you. Please, Mrs. Wilson. I just wanted to make sure, that's all. And I must say I got what I came for. What was that all about, Mrs. Romano? Oh, Mr. Regan, you heard. Marie, Marie, what has she said to Quiet, you? Quiet, Romano. Mr. Regan is right, Elio. It was enough. It didn't sound like nothing, Mrs. Romano. What she mean by tell my neighbors? No, no, no we, we will not talk of it. See, we will talk of it. Mr. Regan, this woman, this is a Mrs. Wilson. She used to be our best customer. Then she turned on us. She tells all her friends not to come to our store. Why? Why? Because, because, who knows why? Oh, you have started it. Now you will finish, Elio. She does not buy from us because we would not let her tell us how to run our store. See, si. that's all there is to it? See. Si. When did this start? A week ago. Oh, uh -huh. same time the fire started. See, si, the same... But, well, Mr. Regan, you don't you think You hired me to think, Romano. I'll see you later. Mr. Regan, where you go? To talk to Mrs. Wilson. If I moved fast, I could find Mrs. Wilson. If I could find her, I could talk to her. She had answers, plenty of them. Plenty more than the Romanos gave her credit for. And then I saw her, a block away, walking fast. I followed. Around the corner, she turned up a walk and disappeared into a two-story apartment house. I was right behind her. The mailbox out front said 208, and when I got there, the door was just closing. I knocked. Yes? Could I talk to you for a minute? Uh, young man, if you're selling I'm not something, selling anything. Then what do you want? Just a couple of questions, Mrs. Wilson, about the Romanos. Oh, so that's your game, is it? You're trying I'm to tell me... I'm not trying to tell you anything. We'd just better talk now, for your own good. You go back and tell those people we don't want them around here. We don't want them in our neighborhood, is that clear? That's as good a place to start as any. Now we'll just... Oh, no, you don't... You're not coming in without a warrant. I knew you were a policeman right away. They called you those Romanos. Just like them to take advantage of our Constitution. But I know my rights as a citizen. Lady, I'm I haven't to tell broken any laws, you understand? It's them that cause all the trouble, them. And we don't want their kind around here. Now, good day. So I had nothing after all. I got in my car, drove down toward police headquarters. And it wasn't that easy. Because behind me, starting at Alvarado, was a yellow Model A Ford. A yellow hot rod, and it wasn't behind me by accident. It stayed there two blocks, ten blocks, twenty. And whoever sat behind the wheel didn't care if I knew it. He stayed that way until we reached a block without traffic, and then suddenly the yellow car gunned up in the rearview mirror. And I could see a young kid hunched angrily over the steering wheel, and there wasn't any doubt about what a kid like that had on his mind or what he was going to do. He moved the car up close, next to mine and yelled something angry kids yell, and suddenly his yellow coupe shot out ahead and cut into me. Whew. Like I figured. He tried to run me off the street onto the sidewalk. And now the yellow coupe was just a blur in the distance. 
I pulled out from the curb, eased into gear, and took my time driving to the police station. The police told me to check with the arson squad, and the arson squad told me to check with the sergeant. And to make a rotten day just that much rottener, the sergeant turned out to be a guy I knew named Bold. All right, what do you want, Regan? Ah, transferred from homicide, Bowles? I don't need any of your lip today, Regan. I'm busy. What do you want? You handle the Romano investigation? Romano? Who's that? It's the poor guy who happens to own a grocery store. Romano. Yeah, I checked it out last week. Find anything? Sure. Scared little guy ought to watch where he tosses his matches. That's all you could find. When I want your advice, I'll ask for Give it. Give bowls. I'm busy today myself. <laughs> Times must be tough, huh, Regan? You're taking a fee from a Answer poor... me, Bowles. Okay. The guy had a fire. Know what caused it? Matches. Know the total damage? Ten bucks. Now, Regan, if you think we got enough men to stake out a two-bit Ever hear of store... putting out a fire before it starts, Bowles? Ah, uh, you wouldn't have heard that. I told you we haven't got enough men, Regan. Sure we'd like to prevent it. Okay. But you need men, Regan. We haven't got them. Okay, Bowles. What have you got? There's no evidence of outside work. Meaning what? No evidence that anybody else started it, Regan. Spell it out, Bowles. Sure. Sure, I'll spell it out. Maybe somebody did start the fire on purpose. You know who gained by that, Regan? No, don't guess. Let me tell you. A character named Romano. Bowles, if you think... I didn't set it up, Regan. Somebody else did. For your information, this client of yours, Romano, has his grocery store well covered. You know what they call it, Regan? Fire insurance. Lots of fire insurance. And that's what I got from Sergeant Bowles. I left the station, drove down to a chop house on 3rd Street, had myself a big dinner and tried to think. Only it wasn't that easy. Ideas would fit together during the salad and go to pieces during the steak. By the time I got to dessert, it was anybody's guess. I paid the blonde waitress and drove out 6th Street watching the streetlights go on and hoping one of them would shed some light on the problem. But when I got past Alvarado, I didn't have time to think. I stepped on the gas, drove faster, into streets becoming crowded, alive, into confusion and fire engines, into shouts and smoke. A man in a fire helmet directed me over to the side of the road, and I parked and got out and walked into the excitement and confusion and heat and into a sweaty, curious, open-collared, open-mouthed, hot-eyed, staring mob. And there were shouts all around me. Hey, Joe. Hey, Edna. Hey, Pete. Come take a look. Romano's, the grocery store. It's burning down. This is CBS, and you are listening to tonight's adventure with Jeff Regan, investigator, entitled A Fire for Romano. A little man named Romano had hired me to find out who tried to burn down his grocery store, and I'd met an irate customer, an overworked cop, and a kid in a hot rod. Now I was back on 6th Street, back at Romano's little store, and there was a mob of excitement-hungry people yelling and cheering and shouting while flames licked up the store walls and around the big new neon sign Romano had proudly shown me. And I was moving into the mob, trying to get closer, when a big burly man, covered with soot and sweat, shoved me aside. Hey, 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 stand back, will you please, mister? Have you seen the owner? Too many people to see anything, mister, out of my way. The big fireman moved on, and I followed him, letting him clear a path through the spectators. And up ahead, I could see another big man. This one I knew. Stand back there. Oh, Regan. Rand, have you seen Romano, the owner? What's he look like? A little guy, dark hair, mustache. Stop control, Regan. I haven't seen anybody. Better stand back. That wall's going soon. Romano and his wife live in there. Sorry, Regan. Too many people. My men can't get equipment Never in. mind. Regan, come back there. Fire Chief Rand's shouts were lost in the crowd behind me as I moved and shoved and pushed my way around to the side of the burning grocery store. Somewhere in there was my client, Romano, and his wife, Maria. And then... Stumbling out through the smoke came a fireman. And he was dragging a man, a little man, coughing, spitting, screaming. It was Romano. This is the man you were looking for, mister. Maria. Maria, let me go, please. Let me go. Romano, it's me, Regan. Let me go in the name of God. Please let me go, Maria. 
I must have got to my money. Here, here, you take him, mister. I'll go back for her. Right, I got him. Mr. Regan. Mr. Regan, where is she? They left for my Maria. Take it easy, Romano. <laughs> They'll get Maria. They must have saved her. I'm going to get to Maria. I'm going to get to I pulled the little man away from the smoke and heat and people and stretched him out on the pavement. In a few minutes, his breathing became regular and the coughing stopped and he slept. And ten minutes after that, the big fireman came out with Maria and placed her on the pavement beside her husband. Only Maria wasn't coughing or breathing. She was dead. The ambulance took Maria and Romano away. The fire hissed steam where the fireman's hoses poured gallons of water. And soon even the crowd had lost interest. And only the hissing steam and smoke filled the cavity that had been Romano's grocery store. Fire Chief Rand came over to me. Did you find him, Regan, that man you were looking for? Yeah, Rand. I found him. He okay? Yeah. Yeah, he'll be all right. Not his wife. Oh, sorry to hear that, Regan. We did the best we could. I know. Rand, what started it? I was just checking... So far, nothing conclusive. You think it was an accident? No. Went too fast. This one was planned, Reagan. Pyromaniac, huh? I'm not too sure. The nuts usually stick around. Watch it. They get their kicks that way. Check the crowds? We always check the crowd. Nothing certain yet. Okay, Ram. Thanks. Oh, uh, Reagan, uh, when you see Romano... Tell him we, we did our best. I left Rand examining the charred scraps of what was left of Romano's grocery store. And I walked down the street thinking, putting the twos with other twos and trying to make fours. And then I saw something up ahead, and I forgot about the twos and fours. It moved faster. It was a yellow Model A Ford parked three blocks from the scene of the fire, sitting quiet, docile, far from the nearest street light. I got to it and started to look in. It was the car that had tried to run me off the street. It was... Get away from there, mister. I turned. Saw a kid. The kid who'd driven the car into me. In his right hand, a revolver. Come on, get away from it. You like guns. They get me things. Come on. You also like matches. Shut up. You also like killing people. Hey! He blinked when I said killing, and I dove across the sidewalk at his knees, and we went down together, rolling on the pavement and digging for the gun. And it was anybody's weapon until I felt the cold steel of it pressing between us. Saw the barrel moving up under my chin. Heard the report. <clears throat> Kid was gone. And I was holding a sticky, damp spot above my left ear. And when I pulled my hand away, it too was sticky and damp. I got up. Rocked unsteadily on my feet, stumbled down to my car. I reached for the ignition, pushed the starter, and decided to wait. Voices and Faces and voices and lights and a big blank wall to stare at. I waited, not being sure, and then I opened my eyes and the blank wall was a ceiling and the face was Sergeant Bowles. Who said it was just a scratch? Lay down. What's going on around here? I said lay down. You want to hurt something or something? Bowles, your humor stinks. Where are we? Georgia Street receiving. Huh? Only why Rand had bought Rand had brought me here. He found you in your car. You were out. Way out. Uh... Romano, is he okay? Yeah, he's okay. His wife, Maria, does Romano know? Yeah, he knows. Bulls. Yeah? You still figure Romano burned his own store down? Shut up. Like you said, Bulls, who would gain but Romano? 
Who, Bowles? Who? Okay, so I was wrong, okay. We did our best. After the crime. What did you do before it happened, Bowles? Slow down, Regan. You're racing your motor. Besides, suppose you answer a couple of questions. Okay. Just ask me. Bowles asked me, and I told him. And he folded his notebook, and he walked out. I got up, checked my legs and the bandage over my left ear, glanced down the hospital corridor, and walked out. Thirty minutes later, the cab let me off where I'd last seen that yellow coupe, and I began to check garages. And the first one I checked was behind the apartment building where Mrs. Wilson lived. And I got nothing. Thirty minutes after that, I'd covered her side of the block and was on the last apartment across the street. Four garages, side by side. First, Chevy. Second, Dodge. Third, Ford. Not a new one. It was a coupe like the yellow one I was looking for, only... This was black. Shiny black. Shiny black. That was worth something. I moved into the dark garage and looked closer at that Model A and reached out and touched the shininess and brought my finger back fast. Sticky. Wet. Newly painted. What are you doing back here? Short, fat, with a flashlight beam in my eyes. Come on, speak up. What's your business? Turn off your light. Not a chance, mister. I'm on I said you. turn it off. Hey! Whose car is this? None of your business. I said whose car? This is my property, mister. You... Talk! It ain't my place to give out information on my tenants. Well, the owner lives in your apartment? Well, I... Does he? Well, I, I rent that garage, mister. Five bucks a month. But the guy who owns the car doesn't live here? It ain't no guy, mister. Woman pays the bill. A woman? A plump woman wears rimless glasses. Yeah. Her name's Wilson. Mrs. Wilson. Hey, that's... Thanks. Hey, you ain't got no right to ask me questions. I moved around the building, across the street, double time. Double time up the stairs. Up to the place I'd been earlier in the afternoon. It was late now. Very late. But whether she liked it or not, Mrs. Wilson was getting a caller. I leaned on the buzzer, stayed on it. And midnight or not, Mrs. Wilson was going to answer if it took me on. What's the meaning of this? The very idea... Oh, it's you. Well, see here. I'm coming in, Mrs. Wilson. I won't have this, you. I'm calling the manager. That's what I'm, I'm going to I'm coming in, but Mrs. Wilson. You policemen have no right to disturb peace-loving citizens. I'm not the police, Mrs. Wilson. You're not the police? Well, in that case, I'll... Not this time. Get out of my house, do you hear? Get out Shut of my... Shut up. Mm. And what do you want? Your son. If he is your son... You're playing crazy. My son is out of town. Really? He's been gone since yesterday. He's visiting his aunt. That right. He, he left on the train for Santa Barbara. That's where my sister lives. Tommy left yesterday morning. Tell me about Tommy. He's a good boy. There's nothing he's done wrong. He's... Uh, what right have what you right got? What right have you got I... covering up a murder? Murder? Sure, murder, Mrs. Wilson. When your kid set fire to Romano's store, somebody was killed. The law can call that manslaughter, Mrs. Wilson, but you and I know it's murder. You're lying. You're making it Why, up. Mrs. You... Wilson? That's all I want to know. Why? Why did you knowingly let your kid set fire to that store? What kind of a distorted brain... You is... shut up! What those people got they deserved, we don't want their kind in this neighborhood. We've got our rights. Who's we? Citizens. Real American citizens. Oh, Romano's not, is that it? There's no place here I think for I'll such... just look around, Mrs. Wilson. Where are you going? Look around. Something brought this business to a boil. You stay out of there! Oh, I wasn't going in. But since you made a point of it... Hmm. Kitchen. You get out of here! Now, why would you care if I looked in your kitchen, Mrs. Wilson? I... <sighs> interesting. Very interesting. You've got no right to Coffee, come in here and... sugar, soap... Oh, I... Lots of it. Let's see. Huh. Say about two dozen cans of coffee. A I... couple of cases of soap. And there's a sugar there. I paid for it. It's my right to buy what I want. Romano can't tell oh, me so what that's I'm it. supposed to... Romano tried to tell you how much you could buy. No huh? dirty, filthy foreigner is going to tell me Say, what that's I can... right. You're an American. A hmm? real patriotic American. Right. The Constitution says you've got a right to buy as much as you want any time you want. You've got your rights. Ah, remember, you're telling me that. So I'll thank you to keep your nose your out of my Your kind belongs business. behind bars, Mrs. Wilson. 
What? Your kind can't eat off the same table with the Romanos. Your kind belongs out back in the pig pen, where you can wallow in your soap and coffee and sugar and greed. How dare you? Get back with the pigs, Mrs. Wilson. Somebody left a loophole in the Constitution. Why? Stand right where you are, mister. Well, that makes it complete. Oh, Tommy. Oh, my Tommy. I thought I stopped you once, mister. Oh, he said such horrible things, Tommy. He said such terrible now, things. I won't be saying much when I get through with him. When you get through with what? Oh. Haven't you killed enough for one night? Killed? Mrs. Romano's dead. Dead from the smoke and flames and... Hate your mother cooked up. Oh, oh no. I, I, I wasn't going to kill her. Sure, a... just a little fire. Burn them out of the neighborhood. It's your mother's idea. Oh, Tommy, don't let him talk to me. That sure, way. they always start that way. Just a little hate. But it builds, doesn't it, kid? Starts with a fist, ends up with guns, lots of them. But Tommy. I, I didn't mean... Go on, shoot, kid. Make the neighborhood safe for Americans. Your mother's kind of Americans kind that breeds hate and greed and gets fat doing it. Tommy, make him stop. Shoot, kid. Go ahead, prove she's right, that you can kill because you're special like she is. I... I... Tommy! Give me that gun. (laughs) The gun. The gun. (laughs) Thanks. There must be something in the Constitution that fits you, Mrs. Wilson. And there was. Murder, arson, whatever you want to call the crimes of Mrs. Wilson. You might say she was fighting for a fifth freedom. The freedom of grab. And she won. The right to spend the next few years grabbing the bars of her own private cell... The next morning, I checked in down at the office of my boss, Anthony J. Lyon. Empty. Anthony J. on vacation. Way up in the mountains, breathing fresh air, living the hard, rugged life. Fishing, hunting, getting next to nature. And doing good. Thought about that as I sat down in his big swivel chair. Anthony J. Lyon, Detective Bureau, Regan speaking. I have a long-distance call for Mr. Jeffrey Regan... From Mr. Lyon in Mammoth Lakes, California. Okay, I'm Regan. The call is collect. Will you accept the charges? What else? Okay, operator. Uh, Jeffrey, is that you, Jeffrey? Ah, Lyon, how's the fishing? You what's that? Oh, terrible connection. I can't hear a thing. I said, how's the fishing? The fishing? Oh, yes, yes, fine, wonderful. Spend every minute out on the lake, open air, exercise. Uh, just a minute, Jeffrey. Certainly, I'm in for five dollars deal, Charlie. Uh, yes, really roughing it, Jeffrey. Yeah, I can tell. Yes, generally fine weather. Just what I needed, all this outdoor exercise. <laughs> uh, pardon me, Jeffrey. These fishermen keep asking advice. I've got aces over queen. Sorry, gentlemen. <laughs> My part again. <clears throat> That's why I called you, Jeffrey. Fish biting that good, huh? Biting? I've never seen so many suckers. I mean, fish in my life. <laughs> you practically have to fight them off. Hey, Jeffrey, this exercise is doing me so much good. Yeah, Lion. Do you mind if I stay another week? <laughs> Jeff Regan, Investigator, is written tonight by William Frug, produced and directed by Sterling Tracy, and stars Frank Graham as Regan with Frank Nelson as Anthony J. Lyon. Original music is by Dick Arant. Jeff Regan, Investigator, is heard transcribed each week at the same time over CBS. Bob Stevenson speaking, and inviting you to be with us again next Sunday at 8.30 for more suspense and mystery and adventure with Jeff Regan, Investigator. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.